Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to resolve an error or blue screen you might be getting where a bad configuration data file is missing in Windows 10. So in this brief tutorial we're going to be walking through how to resolve this. And this is typically if you're having an issue with your master boot record and you're unable to actually get into Windows. This brief tutorial will show you guys how to hopefully reset your master boot record and get on your way. So pretty straightforward tutorial I have in store for you guys today. The most important and probably one of the longest steps, and I'm not going to really be showing this video because there's really no point for me to show it, would be you actually have to download and install the Windows 10 ISO to a bootable CD or DVD. Now that sounds a lot more complicated than it really is because Microsoft does provide a free tool for this called the Media Creation Tool. If you go onto their website, you will simply download the Media Creation Tool and install the version of Windows you are trying to fix onto that CD or DVD. Most people will be 64-bit. And then you're going to simply boot your computer to that CD or DVD as if you were going to install Windows. However, we're going to be using a repair functionality feature within the installer. So if you guys have ever actually installed Windows before using a CD or DVD and like upgraded a computer, you'll, you might have noticed that there's a button at the bottom left that says repair this computer. Well, that's basically what we are trying to get to today by downloading Windows 10 to a CD. And it's very simple and straightforward to do. It's very user friendly. It's a lot better than it was probably even a few years ago. So I will probably put a link in the description for the media creation tool in the description of this video. Just follow along with your on-screen instructions. In terms of a CD or DVD, more than likely it'll have to be a DVD because of the size of the download. So definitely a lot, a good hour just to download the CD, or I should say the ISO to the DVD. You can go do something else in the meanwhile, but it's very critical that you have an installation of Windows on that disk. It's very important. So then once you have access to boot menu on your computer, so it's a little bit different depending on what your motherboard settings are and every computer is a little bit different. It could be the escape key or the F2 or one of the function keys typically. So you want to get to a screen, it might not look exactly how it appears on here, but you might have seen something like this before where you can boot from a CD or a USB or an ISO or something along those lines. So I'm actually going to go down using the arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm going to select and highlight over the number 30 selection that says CD-ROM drive. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard to confirm that selection. Okay, so we're going to press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. And in most cases, like I said, it will be a DVD. And you just want to be patient. Okay, so underneath Windows Setup, you want to make sure the language, time currency, and keyboard input are all the correct. And once you've ensured that, you want to click on Next. And now at the bottom left corner, there should be something that says Repair Your Computer. You want to left click on this button. Okay, so now underneath Choose an Option, what you want to select from this menu would be Troubleshoot. It should be the middle option that says Reset Your PC or See Advanced Options. Now underneath advanced options, what you want to select now is command prompt. Select the command prompt tile, I should say. Use the command prompt for advanced troubleshooting. Left click on that. So now you want to type in boot rec, B-O-O-T-R-E-C, space, forward slash, fix, M-B-R. Fix M-B-R should be one word, and boot rec should be one word, and there should be a space in between boot rec and the forward slash. 
and then you want to hit enter on your keyboard. It should say the operation completed successfully. And now what you want to do is type in boot rack again. So B-O-O-T-R-E-C space forward slash fix F-I-X boot B-O-O-T. Fix boot should be one word. And now you want to hit enter on your keyboard. It should also say that the operation completed successfully. So now once you're done doing that, you want to type in boot rack boot rack one word again space forward slash scan OS scan OS should be one word you want to hit enter it's going to scan all the disks for Windows installations this will take a little bit of time so just be patient and it should say the operation completed successfully in most cases it should say total identified Windows installations it should be one here um, the reason why it probably says zero is I'm in a virtual environment, so it might be a little bit different. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up there, but in any case, it says the operation completed successfully. Once you're done doing that, you would want to type in boot rack. So B-O-O-T-R-E-C space forward slash rebuild B-C-D, all one word, so rebuild B-C-D. Then you want to hit enter on your keyboard. And like I said, since I'm in a virtual environment, this is handling it a little bit differently. But you still want to follow along with the same commands I'm showing in this tutorial. And then there should be something, once you're done running that command, you want to type the letter A in. Because there should be something that comes up on this command line window that says add installation to boot list. Yes, it should be Y, N would be no, A would be all and you would want to select A at this point so just type the letter A and since the commands obviously are not fitting in line with what I'm doing in this tutorial it's not going to recognize it but in your case you want to type the letter A and then once you're done doing that you can just type in the word exit EXIT and that will exit out of the command line window once you're done doing that all you can do at this point would be to exit and continue to Windows 10 and hopefully your problem has been resolved at this point. So I do hope that this brief tutorial was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.